for you enthusiasts of knowledge to this technology tutorial. Try the saying that quite quickly, where we explore the art of efficient information retrieval within your reference manager. Now, I'm really excited today to be able to bring this to you because it's something that has been frustrating me for quite some time. And we're going to be focusing on the innovative ARIA Research Assistant add-on for Zotero. In this digital era, our databases are vast seas of knowledge. However, finding the specific source you require can be akin to searching for a needle in a haystack. I'm sure you've experienced that. While Zotero is a robust reference manager and simplifies many aspects of research, it does leave us with the task of sifting through countless entries at times. But what if there was a way to pinpoint the information you need with just a few keywords? Introducing ARIA, your personal research assistant that leverages the advanced capabilities of custom GPTs. Although previous attempts to integrate AI querying within Zotero's PDF archives have not been successful, ARIA offers a promising solution. Okay, so let's install ARIA. Now to harness the capabilities of this technology, you have to have Zotero obviously installed on your computer, and you'll also need a subscription to GPT Plus, because the add-on only works with GPT-4 family of models. Now also, you'll need to be using Zotero 6, as it does not work with Zotero 7 at this stage, but I would anticipate that that would be updated in the not too distant future, we'll see. The first thing you would do is download the add-on, the XPI file, from the GitHub repository, and a link to the add-on is in the show notes, and also in the article. So once you've got the XPI file for the plugin, you open Zotero, and navigate to the tools menu in the top bar up here and then add-ons. Now I'll just bring this screen over here and you can see here that I've already installed ARIA but what you would normally do is you would go to the gear icon up the top here click on that and then go install add-on from file it would then bring up your Windows Explorer or Finder find the aria.xpi file where you have uh, downloaded it and select it to open. Now, once that is done, the last thing that you would do, click on more, and I would suggest that you have automatic updates on. So we'll close that now, and now we'll go up to our edit, and we'll go to preferences. And here on the right-hand side, you'll find that there's a new menu item for ARIA. So we'll click on that. And now the first thing is to configure the model. Open AI model. GPT-4 is selected by default, but I'd suggest that you go turbo. You insert your open API key, and then that is really all there is to do. If you want to include your email for feedback, you can also do that as well. So just simply click OK. Now you will need to restart Zotero in order for it to take effect. So that's the installation process and next we'll have a look at how to use it. Just before I show you some use cases that I've been playing with, I'll just mention that if you go to the developer's GitHub page and have a look at the readme files there, you'll see some demonstrations of some things that the plugin is capable of. So now we'll go on and have a look at uh, some demonstrations live here. Okay, for the first demonstration, we're going to look at working out a definition of a theory or a description of a, of a theory. So the first thing that we would do is to go into our Zotero database and make sure that you've got your library highlighted right at the top. If you actually are in one of the, uh, the folders, it will the ARIA program or the add-on will interrogate that particular folder and might have trouble finding the others I've found. So go to your, your main folder and then what we would do is we would call up ARIA, which is this icon up the top here. That brings up the search box. Let's just move that over here for convenience. And something that I would suggest that you do is get the hamburger menu here on the right and drop it down and zoom the window up to 150 percent 
I found that the, the, the text, the font size was very small. Okay, so now let's go across here and let's say that we want to find out about stakeholder theory and what Freeman has said about that. So he's the father of stakeholder theory. So we'll just type Freeman into our search box there. And that brings up several of any article where Freeman's been mentioned. So we'll see this one here. That's Freeman, 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 Freeman. Just a shift and that there. That's that one there. And stakeholder theory, reviewing theory list. We'll pull that one in too. Okay, so they're all in. Now what we'll do is just drag those across into the search box for ARIA. All right, so there into the drop area. So you can see that they've got all the papers. So in the bottom of the search box here, we'll just put this question. How does Freeman define stakeholder theory? He is regarded as its father. Hit enter. And then the program will go off and do its stuff. So it's generating the reply at the moment. This is in real time. So I'll let it run so that you can see exactly how long it takes to come up with the response. And there you go. That's it. So there's a response. Often re Freeman, often regarded as a father, defines it as a framework for strategic management that emphasises the importance of identifying and un understanding the interests of all stakeholders in a firm. And that would probably be pretty much it. And that's it goes on there. So obviously... Don't ever use this. That would be very dangerous. It may be, be direct copies from within the papers or whatever, but certainly you have the option to paraphrase something of that nature or give you a better understanding. And then beneath the answer, it is giving you all the references that it has used to find that answer. Done. So that's our first example, and we found the definition of stakeholder theory. So let's go on and find another one. For our next example, we're going to have a look at what the literature says about company director training when it comes to community leadership. So what I've done here is that I've prepared this screen already and up in the top of the search box from my library, I've actually put company director and I've put it in inverted commas. So it's an advanced search and it will pull up anything in the database that talks about company director training in concert with community leadership. So these are all the articles that you can see here. One thing that I have found is that ARIA likes to know what articles that you want looked at. So in this case, we are going to identify the articles because we've already done the search. We've got them all there. So if we just click on the top one there for Lead, Lod and Murray, and then right on the bottom here with the shift key down, that will select them all. We can just drag them across into the drop area. So they're all there. And then after that, ask the question, does company director training help with community leadership? And hit enter. And let's see what it comes up with. This seems to be an issue with it overriding that, but uh, it doesn't seem to affect it. Okay, and here's our answer. Company director training, such as the company director's course offered by the Australian Institute of Company Directors, is designed to elevate the performance and decision-making of it. So this is all very true. Certainly directorship training can be of assistance with community leadership. And here it's got all the references from which it has drawn that information. Now, I should tell you too that these little icons here, this one will bring up the PDF. Uh, this, one, this one just changes the window, puts it over here so you can restore the window so it's back... <clears throat> to the same size and the other one will open the PDF for the document so here we've got English the strategic board we click on that there is it open the, the the document in the corner there so that's another example done of interrogating the database where we've used a search query to find out what it says about uh, the relationship between two items being company director training and community leadership. For our final example here, we're going to have a look at seeing if we can find if there's any conflict or disagreement between papers. So what I've done here already is called up all the papers from my library where mission statements is talked about. I've highlighted them. Now I'm going to drag them all across there. 
and I have tested this before, so it doesn't surprise me that I, I can't see the, the bottom of the chat window. So what I'm going to do, because I know that the, the question box is at the bottom there, is that I'm just simply going to paste the uh, question in, control V, and hit enter, and you can see it's got it all there. It uh, says it's asked the question, but it's also showing here that the add-on is working. So we'll just give it a moment to see what happens. And so it has taken the question, now it is now generating the reply. So that obviously appears to be a little bit of a bug with it. So if you're putting in a lot of papers, just type the question in uh, and it will do it anyway. Now, here's our answer come back already. So it's pretty quick in going through all those papers. Based on the provided documents, there is no explicit indication of a conflict of opinions among the papers. Each document seems to address different aspects of strategic management, mission statements, etc. So it actually has been through it all to look for any conflicts of opinion. And then it's given all the references again, where it's got those from. Now, I just think this is a really wonderful little tool with an enormous amount of promise and looking forward to using it more and more in my research work. I hope you've enjoyed the video and the article. And please feel free to leave comments and let me know how you've got on and any use cases that you may have had for it. Until next time, cheers.